Episode 1 starts with someone saying, Carve it. Carve it into your flesh. Carve it into the land. Carve it into the sea. Carve it into your enemies. Carve it into your spoils. Carve it. Carve it. Carve that warmth into me. Some guy is chopping at a tree, then gets hit by something thrown at him. What are you doing? I can ask you the same thing. Why are you attacking that tree? Are you trying to crush the house? Are you going to be a woodcutter? No, I'm training for battle. Behold my power. Huh, you're a big lad, but you'd be useless in battle. Get ready for lunch. You know, you don't have to throw a knife at me. You're holding dishes and spoons. You wouldn't mind a dish? You know, they say that bears have to eat lots before winter. Oh yeah? So, why are you training again all of a sudden? Well, because I gotta protect this place. After it was all burnt to ashes, it's finally been rebuilt. I'm not letting that happen again. I'm sure Dad would, but his sister breaks the tension by bringing up how good this milk is. Right? That man knows his way around a tea. What are you doing with your hands? It's so creepy. Hey, listen to me. Don't bother. Don't poke your nose into warrior stuff. Doesn't it frustrate you, always being on the losing side? Dad died protecting us. That's right, and you're alive. You've rebuilt this village, and you're eating a delicious meal with two beautiful ladies. We haven't lost it all. Then admires the beauty around them. Farmers greeting each other, and children running around. However, now it's all ablaze, and being raided. While the three of them are hiding behind some bushes. Listen closely. Once we enter the woods, I want you to run. Follow the river, and... However, Enar sees that Lota is having a panic attack. She pats her head. Don't think. Just run straight ahead. Your brother and I will be with you. They sneak out of the bushes and start running. But his mom is hit in the back with an arrow and falls down. Lota hears Enar scream out and starts to run back. You ready? Let's get you up. The wound begins to bleed. Enar, run. Leave me. Come on, stand up. Mom? We hear distant voices. There are still people over there. They've got women too. We're on our way, girls. His mom sees a look in his eyes and punches him in the chest. Stand up. Take Loda and go. Even a dying old hag can still manage. Live. As long as you're alive, you can. His mom eventually bleeds out. And their house burns down. The group arrives. Huh? Why aren't they running? Hey, she's pretty cute. Your mom's dead, isn't she? Let's go. Hey, let go of her. However, they elbow him. Loda says, how dare you? As the guy is carrying her, she pulls a knife from her hair and stabs the guy in his shoulder. She tells him you're pay for, but the guy slashes her across the chest, and she falls over. What the hell are you doing? She freaking stabbed me. Oh man, what a waste. Nothing we can do about it now. Let's sell the kid for beer money. You're such a dumbass. I'm sorry, okay? Come on, let's go beer money. Enar is obviously frustrated by the situation and gets consumed by his anger. It reads, a fur on a barren land withers, with neither bark nor leaves. So too does a man loved by none. Why should he live a long life? Have a mall. After that, we see a ship at sea, with people being transported. Enar focuses on the woman in pain. He gets up and asks, how is she? He looks at her mouth and says she's not going to make it. Fine, let's move her. They carry her out and toss her over. Hey, what the hell is that for? You didn't need to throw her overboard. The guy punches Enar in the stomach. Alright, you're not swollen. We're handing out blankets. Keep yourselves warm. We paid a fortune for you lot. Don't go getting sick without our say-so. At the very least, stay healthy until we find a buyer for you. Got it? Enar looks at the sea once more, and has a flashback to his mother. He grits his teeth. That's right, I have to live. They arrive at a town and are given food. 
Don't skip the liquor, it'll improve your color. Clean every nook and cranny, especially your heads. Check each other for lice. How's this? Hair's good, could you do her makeup so she looks a little younger? A guy looks at their teeth and decides to pass. Enar just scoffs. Well, pretty good selection this time, don't you think? All second rate crap. There you go again, you won't find anything better than ours. Enar sneaks off and runs. That's right, I can't stay here, I'll run away. As long as I survive, I can try again. He's resting on a tree when his stomach growls. He sees a house off in the distance and raids it. The owner comes in so he runs out, but is stopped by someone on horseback. Listen closely slaves, your homes are far, far away. No matter how much you struggle, you're never getting back to them. And, naturally, nobody's going to help you escape. Because you're outsiders and penniless slaves. Find a good master and serve him as best you can. You'll eat way better than if you run away and end up a beggar. Before you go running off on adventures, think real hard about which is better. You got that, Enar? After that, Enar is getting whipped by someone. Enar says to himself, I have to live. Well, he's not bad, but do you have any boys with the cuter face? Ah, I see. In that case, we've got some special products for you to look at. Oh, really? How exciting. I'm sure you'll find them satisfactory. That's right. Even if I blindly run away, I wouldn't know where I was going. And, besides, I don't have anywhere to go back to as long as I obediently serve some master somewhere. I'll tell you, you sure are lucky. We just got a huge batch in. Look, that's him. Isn't he the one you're looking for? The guy stares at Enar in shock. He looks nothing like him. He's not blonde or small. Huh? Now that I get a better look, I guess that's not him. That aside, what do you think? He's strong and tough. If you buy him now, I told you, all I want is to free my relative. I'm certain he came to this town. Blonde and small. His name is Thorfinn. You really have no idea where he is? The guy shrugs. The guy grabs onto Enar. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry to have bothered you. No problem. Come again soon. He's never gonna find him. So, he's walking around looking for his relative... Whoever he's looking for is one lucky guy. Enar is lost in thought, but some guy says, You there, can you speak? Let me see your teeth. The guy checks his teeth, then his body. What's your name? Enar. Where are you from? What did you do before? I was a farmer in northern England. Hmm. What do you say, Enar? Would you like to help out on my farm? A farm? They arrive on their land. Enar, over here. All of my people are at work now. I'll introduce you to them at dinner. But first, take a look at my farm. Enar sees endless fields, and remembers back with his family eating and laughing together. Hey mom, was that really true? Live or die, I'll never be free again. You still think I haven't lost? My family was taken from me. I lost my home. I lost everything. I don't even know what the point of living was anymore. Enar hears the distant chopping of wood. Thorfinn, it's me. Come here. I'll be bought by a good master and do my best to serve him. As long as I'm an obedient slave, I won't starve. I was beginning to think that way. That was how Thorfinn and I met. Then the episode ends. Some personal thoughts. I feel so bad for the people at MAPPA. Because the amount of time and effort that goes into making something look this good has to be an insane amount. This episode just blew by. It was 25 minutes long, but it felt like 5 minutes. There wasn't a lot of dialogue, so this will be a shorter video. I'm really looking forward to what the rest of this season has to offer. Just a heads up, I don't know if I'm going to cover this weekly. When Fruit of Evolution 2 comes out on the 13th, I was planning on covering that, so depending on how that episode goes, I may start covering that instead, but that's about it, so yeah.